Hello and welcome to Isolated Ape podcast episode number 22. These are racking up fast. This week's uh, guest is Luca Allen. Luca Allen is a young Irish gentleman who is doing big things in the motorsport world. He is the current Southeast Asia Formula 4 champion uh, with dreams of getting to Formula 1. So we discuss, you know, everything there is about karting for, or, or motorsport starting from go-kart into to Formula 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, you know, the speed the dangers um he's also done a bit of modeling so we have a discussion around that um places that he's been some of the people that he's met some of his hopes and aspirations um we also discuss family life so uh luca allen is the son of rachel allen uh who's a famous tv chef here in ireland um his grandmother on his dad's side is also a very famous chef as well so uh he ate well as a child um, and uh food is a big part of their life so uh we have a, a, an overall discussion around what it's like for a 17 year old to be living out his dream and uh aiming for formula one um such a sensible head on this guy that i think he's uh, there's there's nothing stopping him and um, very focused very determined um and and that comes across and it's stuff that we discuss so uh, i hope you enjoy the episode um and yeah uh speak to you soon peace So, welcome to Isolated Eight Podcast, um, and this week's guest is Luca Allen. How are you getting on, Luca? Yeah, very good, thanks. How are you? Very, very well, mate. Very well. So, in all honesty, we've tried this a couple of times. We've had a couple of issues with recording. We've had a couple of schedule hiccups, and uh, uh, I'm glad we're here now, and I'm glad we're getting to do it. So, so thanks very much for your time, man. Um, first of all, Luca, obviously, we're going to get into... Um, you what you get up to the the motorsport side of you um the modeling side of things and uh and just general kind of life stuff but um i wanted to start with the um just growing up at home obviously for for those who don't know your mother is a well-known chef your grandmother on your dad's side is also a well-known chef here in ireland um so how did you how did how did how was that growing up i suppose you ate well you did <laughs> um yeah the dinners were definitely nice <laughs> anyway but um <laughs> i don't know i suppose it was just kind of it was always just the norm to me really um yeah, yeah. i suppose there's there's a lot of advantages in it and um get to grow up in a nice environment and a lot of opportunities as well within the family business and um and then there also comes the responsibility of kind of um acting acting well i suppose you don't want to you don't want to get bad press or whatever and but yeah, no, it was great growing up in um in the environment I did with um and luckily a very supportive family and yeah, growing up yeah, a lot man. of opportunities, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And and is is food a big part of the daily household as well as kind of obviously when when how do I want to put this now? I've got mates who are builders, right? And they've all got building work that needs to be done in their house, right? And and their excuses are, I've just done a whole day's work of building. I'm not going to go on home and do some more. Um, and is that kind of similar in, in the chefing kind of world? Is it because it becomes a, a, a job? Did, did they come home and, and was cooking in the kitchen all a daily kind of part of your life? Or or was it quite separate? Um, yeah, so my mum is usually working in the cookery school during the day. Um, so she's obviously cooking all day, but my dad is actually really into cooking as well, because obviously his side of the family is... Um, yeah. Uh, so my dad, well, now that he can't go to the pub, he, uh, he, he spends a lot of time on dinner. But um, yeah, no, definitely food is a, a big part of my household. And um, and yeah, we, we all we all love food and we're all interested in it. So, yeah. And what about you? Do you uh, do you cook? Have you got any signature dishes? Um, I do cook a bit, actually. Yeah, I am. Um, I. Yeah, well, I know how to cook the simple things. I wouldn't say I'm amazing at cooking but um you know I, I like to cook for myself the other time as well and obviously i i kind of can't help but learn a bit by being around being around growing up so yeah 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 of course of course and is is on uh, you know in ballymaloo house is and and it's got the the school but is is it a farm and a running farm as well 
Yeah, uh, so I'm working on the farm now as well during quarantine, but um, it's it's a bit of a farm. It's mainly growing food. Uh, we have a big glass house and um, and a lot of land to to grow food uh, for the cookery school. Um, Perfect. Yeah, it's a nice little setup they have there. Yeah. And is that something that you've kind of growing up with? Is something you've put your hand to and working on the farm? So I mean, kind of you know cultivating your own food and stuff like that. Is 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 that something that you think you'll carry on in your adult life or? <sighs> um. I don't know. I've never. I. I don't think I've too much interest in it. I suppose someone has to probably take it over um, eventually. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not too no. busy driving around the world, though, right? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to that. Obviously, now at the moment, you're the Formula Four Southeast Asia champion, which is a, a massive, massive achievement. Um, how did it all start? Kind of, where did it start? I believe it was go karting. Is that correct? Yeah, so I started go karting when I was nine. Um, yeah, just kind of growing up, always obviously kind of being around the farm as well. There's always little things to drive around. Um, so I always just loved driving, basically anything with four wheels and then or even two wheels at times. But um, yeah, and then I got a second hand go kart when I was about nine years old, and it all just it's gone from there really. Kind of all, all happened quite quickly. But um, yeah, no, I mean I love racing and. It kind of it's definitely something i'll do for the rest of my life even if it is just carting around the dreams obviously formula one and um but yeah yeah no yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the racing stuff is just it, it, it's weird actually it, it's kind of it's just kind of spiraled into what it is now naturally in a way it's um but yeah no i think i'm i'm really lucky to kind of know what i want to do so young so, and uh yeah 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 I'll be able to work on my passion and going back to the go kite and on where it started and and how old were you when you were i mean how old were you when you were kind of realizing that this is more than just a hobby and something that i'm i'm pretty good at i'd say it was that's a good question i think it was about when i was about 12 and or 11 11 or 12 and i won my first championship and because the dream always was like since i was nice since i started the dream was always formula one um, and yeah. but it was it kind of started becoming more realistic and uh because when you're young you kind of you always oh, i want to be a football player i want to be kind of all this and that but yeah it's, it's just i don't know it's it's all it, as i said it's all just kind of happened naturally and um and always looking for the next step and yeah yeah and building and that took you southeast asia eventually obviously i'm sure there was a few stages in between but southeast asia um formula four was was the last step on your journey or, or you know the the step that you're currently on right um and how did that come about and and how much of a a, a risk or did you feel it was a risk or, or were you just so keen to go move into across the other side of the planet to, to drive cars rather than the you know near, near to home yeah um so i, I did a, i did a season in british formula four as well and um and then the plan was kind of to do another season in f4 to two years in f4 and we weren't kind of sure where to do it um the Southeast Asian Championship, I think, uh, was just a great option because you get so much track time over there. It's um, it's great kind of conditions to train yourself. Obviously, really hot and, and everything over there. Um, so yeah, it was it was just a great championship to go into. Um, the tracks were great. Um, and yeah, a lot of track time. So. Yeah, and how did that work? Did you? Did you go out to Southeast Asia for an extended period of time, or were you back and forth home in between races? How did that work? Um, yeah, so I, I came, I was probably in Asia about two weeks every month, so about half the time. Um, and then I was kind of in school in between, and it was because there was a better race each month, so I'd always, whenever I go over there, it'd be for about two weeks with all the testing and, and jet lag and everything. So, um, yeah, it was a fun year. You test, test, race come home celebrate test race come <laughs> home celebrate yeah. hopefully <laughs> hopefully i'll be celebrating it <laughs> sometimes well it's a long flight back if you don't have a good weekend yeah yeah i can imagine if you if you know that you've dropped the clang and you can't blame yeah. the car you can't blame this if it's it's purely down to you that's a lot of time to to sit and think um mm -hmm. and and what kind of place what what are the best places that you went to in southeast asia racing what were the some of the highlights for you um I love the food out there, actually, all the street food and stuff. Um, but you, I, I don't know, I didn't really get to explore probably as much as I would have liked to. Um, 
obviously I, I got to see kind of all the culture and everything and it's amazing um to see all the different cultures at such a young age as well but yeah no i think i'd um i didn't because when you get there and you're kind of at the hotel and you're you're doing all your track notes and you can, you don't really have much time to go out and explore uh, uh yeah. i would have liked to but um yeah it was it was it was really cool seeing a completely different part of the world and you know it was great and and when you're in that formula four race car is that the kind of fastest car that you've draw, driven so far um and what yeah. kind of speeds would they be um i think the top speed is different at every track um okay. but we probably reach about 230 max wow but uh, okay. yeah, no, it's 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 fun. <laughs> it uh, and I suppose, obviously, kind of, you know, in when you're going back towards go karting, obviously those that that speed reduces, right? But does the safety kind of is it more is it safer the faster you're going in an F4 car than it would be in a go kart? I would assume because of the you know the safety bars and everything that goes with it. Whereas in a go kart, you seem fairly external. Um, do you, do you feel the difference there, or 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 what what do you think is more dangerous, go karting at whatever speed you're doing that in, or or going at uh, two hundred and thirty in a Formula Four car? Um, I suppose the go karting, it's weird in a go kart because you're not going so fast per se. You might be maybe a hundred kilometers an hour max, but because you're so close to the floor and you're all so close together, it's uh go karting is is amazing really with um because you're just so open and you're literally inches away from everyone else and you're so close to the floor um, and yeah, yeah. obviously in f4 it's a bit different you've obviously a kind of a full car around you um but the safety and the safety in formula four is amazing in all the in all the formulas they've done a great job on that and then in karting in car it's it's funny in karting actually you don't there's a few kind of freak accidents like what happened in any sport really but for some reason you it's doesn't actually seem that dangerous or i don't know if it's that dangerous or it doesn't actually seem to be that much accidents where you get hurt too badly it happens sometimes but um yeah no it's i, I love karting i've kind of grown up in karting and i always really? even in the winter is always looking to go karting and it's, yeah, 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 it, yeah it's amazing i love karting yeah and do you have any restrictions on insurance and things like that now that you're a Formula 4 driver? Would they allow you to kind of, you know, a professional footballer can't just jump on a motorbike or, or jump on a quad bike and go flying yeah. around the place. Do you have any of those kind of restrictions on you? Um, not not like on paper, but like my team probably wouldn't be too happy <laughs> with yeah. me. Uh, doing, but yeah, it hasn't, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm actually looking to get a, a little scrambler or a buggy for the field now, uh, now okay. that summer. I think it'd be fun, but actually, maybe it, maybe my team would do that. <laughs> yeah, they would be, be getting a, a text message there now over the next few weeks saying, I don't think that's a great idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I mean, outside of karting and uh, sorry, outside of, of motorsport, what other things do you enjoy and get up to? Um, outside of motorsport, I'm kind of just a normal teenage guy, just like my friends. I, I play hockey and rugby in school. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I love all sports, really. I used to play football until I went to boarding school and just kind of hanging out with my friends. I like to go out on the weekend sometimes if it's not too close to a race. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, no, I'm just a, a normal kind of teenage kid when I'm at the track. Cool, man. And, um, and it's opened up other opportunities and other doors for you, whether that be from obviously kind of having the family name or, or whether it's just from the go-karting and the skills that you've picked up there. Um, but I know modeling is something that you've kind of delved into a little bit. How did that come about and uh, and, and how much do you enjoy that? Um, I started modeling. That was, that's actually funny. I was, I think I was about 15 and a scout uh, from a New York agency texted me on Instagram, just kind of, I don't know, he must have came across my page or something. And then I signed to an agency in New York. Um, but then I was so young at the time, it was, it was so hard to get over to do any work or whatever. Um, and then I eventually signed with an Irish agency called Not Another. Um, and so I've been doing a bit of work with them. And I think overall, I think it kind of, helps my brand and maybe I get more jobs because of, I don't know, maybe added value being an athlete or whatever, but 
yeah no it's kind of it's kind of just a side thing there's a few kind of big things in in the motions now with modeling um hopefully happen soon but it's so yeah i i, I like it I, I enjoy it and um but it's are you into fashion and is clothes something that you enjoy i mean you know it's I, it, it for me i'm not a kind of you know uh i don't keep up on the latest trends and the latest fashions and and worry about what this person's wearing or that person's wearing um and i think kind of you know going and having people take photos of me in clothes would be a a, a tough gig for me um but i mean do you in, it, it, do you enjoy and, and what are the benefits of it do you get to keep any of the clothes or, or what's the story about? <laughs> that's what everyone asks no um this, uh when I was doing a bit of work with Duns, actually, they, were, they sent me a, lot, a few clothes. But um, no, it's kind of, it, it did take a while for me to kind of get used to because it is, when you think about it, think of doing it, you would just kind of think, oh, I'll just stand there, whatever, get a few pictures taken, get a bit of money or whatever, it's grand. But it did kind of take me a while to get, it's, I don't, it's hard to explain. It's kind of like a different kind of environment that you have to get used to. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've, I've always been into fashion and um, I've, I've learned to enjoy uh, modeling a, a lot more now, I think. And um, it always helps when you're working with really nice people and nice photographers. And yeah, no, the, the scene in Ireland anyway, is, um, it's nice and um, it's not too kind of intense. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because I have this vision in my head modeling as being kind of a cutthroat industry and <laughs> Yeah, um, it is you know, a bit I can imagine it is, yeah. But uh, I suppose that's when that's it when it's your first and and only kind of play in, in you know, if you if you want to be a model and become a model and that's your only outlet and your only avenue, then I can understand the pressures are a lot more uh, a lot more intense as for yourself you know your your aim is to be a formula one driver and be a motorsport yeah. driver and modeling something on the side so you know you can probably take it or leave it a little bit more um and have you met any cool people through that have you worked with any i saw that you were uh yeah you did a bit was it paul galvin uh who was the the gaa guy who's now um modeling and fashion designing and stuff like that you you linked up with him is that correct yeah he um paul has a range with don stores and um yeah no paul's uh he's a great guy i've worked with him quite a lot now and um yeah he's obviously has a a massive passion for fashion as well and um yeah he's doing a great job now with duns and but now some really cool ranges and yeah i got to luckily i was able to to work with them and kind of be a part of it a bit happy days happy days and going back to the to the motorsport side of things who were you, who who would be your idols growing up what kind of you know who who did you want to emulate and and even in kind of today's racing world who who are your favorites who are your not so favorites um you probably don't want to talk about the not so favorites <laughs> you have to meet them there next year <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um ferrari have always kind of i wouldn't say have a special kind of place in my heart but since i was young um my dad loves formula one as well so i used to watch the race with him and even when i was four or five i remember just always loving the red cars as i used to call them that's all i know about cars yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> exactly yeah so um I'd, uh, my dream someday would, would be to to drive a ferrari car um and be a for uh, eddie irvine of course being an irish man is a uh, one of my idols yeah, yeah. um but yeah no well it's funny in formula one i don't really have kind of favorite drivers um i like a few of the new lads coming in uh charlotte claire well not so new anymore two years or three years in it but um a few of the young lads landon Norris, george russell but with those guys I've, i kind of watched them grow from even karting all the way to formula one so they're kind of the first guys i've seen go through the whole thing and um yeah formula one is uh talking about cutting in industries i'd say that's definitely another one With, uh, yeah i had uh i had a, a guy on um a friend of mine richard wilson um he's a photographer who who specializes in formula one photography um and that was something that he said he uh he, he he said it's uh, it's quite a cutthroat industry and and out of all of them like in, and even the things that he delves in and dabbles in through photography in that world he says it, it it's fairly harsh and cutthroat um and you were mentioning watching these guys coming up through the uh through the ranks and through the go-kart and things like that is that the general route 
is that kind of how it works for for everybody? Would Lewis Hamilton and and even back in the day, the likes of you know maybe Ayrton and Senna could go in way back and 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 Schumacher and things like that? Would they have all had to kind of progress through this route? Is that the kind of process? Yeah. So um, obviously, over time, there's kind of different championships and everything, but I'd say every Formula One driver on the grid now has probably started in karting and then went in single seaters and kind of built their way up. Uh, there's a lot of different championships out there. Um, but yeah, the main route is F4, F3, F2, F1 kind of thing. But um, yeah, there's only 20 seats on the grid and you have thousands of kids trying to, <laughs> trying to yeah, fight for it. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah, tough, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously we we got in contact through a mutual friend um, and I know he was keen in karting and, and, and is still kind of involved pretend, like to, to a degree. Um, and it's an it's not a cheap sport to be included in right it's it's uh, it's fairly costly i know obviously kind of there's benefits to it and and when you make it to the top if you make it to the top the rewards mm -hmm. are immense right but um it it kind of it, from from what he's telling me it's it's a fairly expensive thing to do have you got kind of you know if if my kid said to me i wanted to go to car and i don't think i'd be able to provide that for him you mm -hmm. know um is, yeah. is that something yeah, that you were aware yeah. of growing up and and saw kind of throughout it yeah um obviously i'm very grateful for all my sponsors and everyone that helps me and, and my parents as well um but yeah karting is it's tough with karting because you can't really get commercial say sponsorship from it because there's not so much there's not much of an audience there's not much to advertise um but yeah i mean like you wouldn't even believe me but the the top lads in europe will be spending about 250 to 300 thousand a year on karting um and in ireland now i think with the team i was with who would be one of the top teams i think you can do it for about ten thousand a year um 10 or 12. uh so it, it, in karting the, the sponsors you kind of have are just local kind of businesses that that want to help out that throw in a few hundred or whatever yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so yeah and um, do you know what i love how you're so acutely aware and you have such a knowledge as a you're 17 is that correct yeah yeah 17. yeah and, and your knowledge and awareness of sponsorship and building that brand and and all that is 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 that something that you've been working on from a young age and you've always been aware of or is it something that you've had to adapt to over the last couple of years or, or how has that worked because it's just again you know talking to sponsors and and um, you know, earlier when I was saying to, we were talking about family, one of the things that you mentioned is, you know, you don't want to be kind of getting bad press. And, and do you think that's all tied in with, with your knowledge of this? Um, yeah, I think um, that's a good, a good question. I think, I don't know, I, I, a lot of these things I think I don't even realize because um, it's just kind of like racing's almost my life, basically. So I just, everything just kind of revolves around that. Um, and yeah just i've been trying to build because build my brand for sponsors and and it's all just kind of happened naturally or well, my dad is is a great um he's great at kind of guiding me and um uh looking for sponsors and stuff like that as well so well he kind of knows the business from my half kind of managing my mom as well um yeah, yeah, yeah. different route obviously but yeah, same yeah. Kind of principle. similar, similar principles i suppose that's it yeah and um and then the kind of sponsors that you have at the moment, are they all based around the kind of car inside of things? I know Don's probably with the model inside of things is slightly different, whether that's a sponsorship or just a paid job. And we don't need to get into the ins and outs of it. But I mean, when you're looking for sponsors, do, are you are you were a, kind of want them to tie in with your brand and with the motorsport side of things? Or are you just looking, are you, are you happy to take a sponsor on that? You know, I, you know what I'm um, trying to say, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, now I definitely wouldn't say no to any sponsor if they want to write yeah, me yeah. a nice check. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I uh, know. Yeah, de definitely. You kind of try to link your brand in with what, what sponsors suit you. And um, I suppose with sponsors as well, especially at a young age, half of it just kind of wants to be a guy with a lot of money that wants something exciting, kind of wants to, wants to just sponsor a young kid and hopefully yeah, see him Formula One. That's it. That's it. And then in terms of kind of making it to Formula One, we've you know we've spoke about the 
the the kind of the sponsorship side of it and the cost of it but i'm sure there's an awful load of uh you know the the training that goes into it from from both the driving side of things and also from the physical side of things so i mean on on a physical side of things is there an awful lot of work that you need to do do you have to i know i know for yourself you're a young fit lad and in general anyway and when i was 17 you know um keeping fit wasn't as tough as it was when I was in my late twenties, you know? So, um, mm. but do you still have a rigorous kind of routine and performance kind of training that you have to do? And is that something yeah. you keep on top of? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, usually I would be, well, I'm injured at the moment, so I can't train unfortunately. Uh, but usually try train twice a day when I'm in school, um before school and then after school again and then now during quarantine we're working on the farm i just kind of i do a run or a, a workout after work but um but yeah you definitely have to especially this year driving in japan the weather and, and the conditions everything are going to be quite tough so it's my responsibility to make sure that i'm in peak physical condition to to perform at my best so and is there any particular kind of, you know, obviously uh, the, the exercises that, say, a boxer or a MMA fighter um, would do compared to a soccer player or, you know, the explosiveness that a rugby player needs compared to what a rower needs would all be very different. Do you have a, a specifically designed program for, for driving a soccer? Um, I don't have a program. No, I kind of... I probably should get a personal trainer pretty soon but i usually i try to do actually funny to say boxing exercises kind of because they almost have the same principles kind of you need a good core um for the g-forces and you need to be quite light and and uh and kind of good conditioning uh which is similar to boxing so yeah, I do you try do that do... reaction type work as well because obviously you need to have quick reactions so i mean yeah. you know, the boxers are kind of trying to touch the light or whatever the case may be that kind of uh those kind of reaction trainings i suppose are vital as well right yeah before a race we'd always be we're with the teammates over throwing some balls against the wall and doing all these kind of different reaction stuff to just get your brain switched on and all right yeah, yeah 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 cool and then on the kind of you know i'm sure and and i i know because we've had a brief conversation around it before but tell me about the kind of the what's the word i'm looking at the academic side there's also an awful lot of academic side and work that needs to be put into you know learning the tracks and and things like that tell me a little bit about that yeah so um i suppose well what i do anyway is um whenever i get home from a race or a test day or even on the flight home sometimes i just write a kind of very detailed report on i get like my best lap on video and then each corner i kind of write a paragraph about so um breaking at this point turning in like what pressure you break what uh speed you'd be doing at the apex and the apex is basically the middle of the corner kind of thing um and just yeah just so so, yeah, so then I, you have those notes so when you go back to the track you don't have to uh, waste a session kind of learning the track again it's all kind of okay. yeah yeah yeah. it's all there you're just having to read over it before you revisit the track again and hoping yeah. that, that it's all kind of muscle memory and i suppose there's kind of very fine margins in that like you're saying the brake pressure and the top speed or the speed at the apex and and you know what what angle you're coming in at um what is the margin for error there is it is it so minute like is it it's oh it's the the margins in motorsport anyway because it'll it's crazy because it would be like i don't know say a two minute lap and it would be tenths of a second in between everyone so you're literally looking for extra 10 meters breaking on that corner extra few kilometers through the corner you're always it's really really tiny margin so you need to to, to be fast and and to win you need to really work hard in um perfecting your laps and being consistent and all those kind of stuff so yeah there is there's a lot more that goes into it i suppose than than what it shows on the outside because i suppose yeah, people yeah. probably just think we hop in the car and drive around in circles all day and uh Off you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah no it's a it's a very very technical sport and and then look we've we luckily we've uh, mechanics and engineers and stuff to help us and uh yeah no no i, I love it though it kind of, weather conditions and everything all come into that and and you know so so even if you've got all your detailed notes if you go back and the weather's different to what it was those notes are not useless but yeah. you know they're definitely going to need a bit of editing right yeah um 
yeah, there's a, that, 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 that's another part of being a great driver, being able to adapt to different weather conditions. And obviously there's going to be less grip in the rain. And, um, but that, yeah, that, that's really fun as well. Just because it's, it's, it's yeah. your favorite to race in. I mean, obviously kind of, you know, a dry day and at a certain temperature, you're going to get better speeds, but what's more fun. I love driving in the rain, but I don't, I think, I don't think I'm that great in the rain, but I, if it was a race and I needs to win, I'd love for it to just be dry. And then, because I kind of not even more comfortable, but I just I think I'm just fast and dry, whatever. But, but driving in the rain is so fun because you're kind of it's not like a road car, I suppose, where you have all the assists or whatever. You're literally kind of sideways everywhere, and you're just yeah, it's yeah, just great yeah. fun. It's like driving a I don't know like a dune buggy. You're in a muddy field or something like that. You're always yeah, kind of yeah. on edge, and yeah. And then. Um... In terms of kind of the competition that you're up against now at the moment and things like that, like, are you racing guys from all over the world? Um, I, I would assume, you know, um, and do you, what's the rivalries like in, you know, obviously we see in, in Formula One, there's big rivalries between some guys, there's much friendship between others. Does that work throughout the, uh, throughout the tiers? Is that the same? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, I have, I have a lot of great friends who I race with, but when you put on your helmet, you're kind of just you don't really give a fuck about or excuse the language, but <laughs> you don't okay. really, uh, yeah. I don't know. A everyone's in it for themselves in the kind of, in the least selfish way possible. You don't really care about your competitors or even your friends wh when you're in the car. Um, and have so you, any you can fall out with some friends sometimes. Pull a dirty on someone. <sighs> yeah. The, th the thing is, you never think it's your fault when you're driving. <laughs> like a little, so, I mean, I'm on about a little shunt here or a little crossover there or, uh, you know, is there times where you, you've, you, you know this guy and you're friendly with this guy but you have to get past him and you've had to maybe do little nudge that may be illegal, then things uh, happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, um, the, yeah, there's no, there's no friends on the racetrack. You need to, <laughs> and then, <laughs> but you'd have friends and so you just, you, well, I've had teammates who I've, I'm great friends with, and yeah, because you, you do get close, and it's, it's always going to happen. But you need to just kind of learn to leave it, leave it at the track, and you need to understand that 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 everyone's in it for themselves, and that they're not racing and devoting their life to going to help you to on the racetrack. So, um, yeah, so you do fall out with a few friends, and there's definitely some tense rivalries there as well. But yeah, that's all good. It's all good, <laughs> and. Um... And obviously, kind of out of the Formula 4, kind of you said there's 20 positions on the grid, for example, and obviously there's thousands of people that are wanting to get into this. How many of the 20 on your grid would be kind of move up to Formula 3 and then move up to Formula 2? And f I mean, is out of that 20, are we talking kind of two or three or, or half of um, them? Or? Yeah, well, yeah, see, a lot of people would go then to GT cars and... But it's, it's kind of almost like a pyramid, basically. And it's just, everyone takes different routes. Not everyone's goal will be Formula 1. Maybe some people want to, I don't know, drive Lamborghinis in a GT championship or whatever yeah, kind yeah. of thing. But um, Or rally championship, maybe another route. And, and it just yeah, depends yeah, on exactly. what um, okay. Yeah, so most of the lads I'll be racing against now would, would be looking to move up to Formula 3 or, or something else, whatever, whatever they're looking to do. But yeah, m yeah, most most people's goal is Formula 1, really, from a young age. And and tell me, as a seventeen-year-old, please tell me you passed your driving test first time. That that's a that, that that's a bad subject. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't preloaded with that at all, man. It was just a question. I thought because I'm thirty-eight, man, and I passed my driving test last year, but it was my first attempt, so uh, it wasn't the lack of skills. Time. It was just the lack. Of, okay, okay. Now, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what it was though. It was. The first time I was so confident going into it, I thought, ah, I'm a racing driver. Thought, you know, like, like, and uh, even when I was, I was so confident, I was like, ah, I nailed that. And then I got in and I failed, but I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and, uh, and my dad told me I'd fail first time. He said, no, you're, you're too confident going into this. Um, and then the second time, though, I actually thought I should have failed the second time. The first time was flawless. I don't know how I failed the first time. <laughs> uh, but I think I, he failed me on reversing too fast around the corner. I think when you, you know you have to do that kind of whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, time, yeah. But yeah, I, I passed a second time anyway for the short. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I came out of the driving test centre. I went down down the hill to the roundabout there, and uh, 
as we were going around, I was like, oh, shit, I'm in the wrong lane here. And I know I'm in the wrong <laughs> lane, you know. And I made sure I had a little look around. And then I was like, whoopsie. And I said, whoopsie, as I did it and moved <laughs> over. And the woman just laughed at me and giggled and carried on. And the rest of my driving thing was flawless. She goes, the only mistake I made was just on the roundabout. I was, I was just in the wrong lane. But I moved over safely. She was like, you did. You're grand. So, uh, yeah, happy days. Happy days. Um, cool. And out of the... Uh, out of the, the kind of, you know, moving up to Formula One or, or into Formula Two and Formula Three, who are the people you're most looking forward to meet? Who are the, who, who have out of the racing drivers that you've met, uh, you know, we, uh, did you get most inspiration from things like that? Um, it's funny. I've, um, I've been talking to Tommy Byrne a bit. Uh, he's, uh, some motorsport fans might know him. He's an ex Irish Formula One driver. Oh. Um, and he's kind of helped guide me a bit. Uh, but the main one would kind of be uh, David Kennedy, another ex-Irish Formula One driver. He's um, kind of almost been my mentor for the last few years because he knows the business. He's been through it all. And uh, he uh, he's actually the one that got me to drive in Japan for this year because uh, he used to race out there and he knows guys out there and they're looking for a driver. And so that's not Formula kind of, 4, right? Is that a, diff- is that a different thing? Uh, yeah, so this Formula year... It's there are Formula Three cars, uh, but the championship's called Super Formula Lights. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically a Formula Three championship, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Every, every year, you seem to be progressing, man. It's brilliant. Um, what kind of time frame are you giving yourself? Obviously, you'd you'd happily get there when you're 50, right? But I mean, what's the <laughs> kind of aim to to get to get to Formula One if you can? Um, I mean, you, you probably have a plan, but you're exceeding the speed of that at the moment. I assume the way this is progressing for you, so. Yeah, I'd like to be in Formula One when I'm 24, I'd say. would okay. be kind of a good age, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, just trying my best to progress as much as I can now. And I kind of, I believe that if I work hard enough and do everything I meant to do, then I will get to Formula One one day, hopefully. Um, uh, yeah, so... I'll do. I'll ring you back when I'm 24, and you can ask. Yeah, me. yeah, we'll see what the story is then, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a Formula One driver by the time you're 24, and I get in contact with you, you'd be like, "Yeah, man, I haven't got." <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, yeah, man. To be fair, you know, it, it it seems like you've got a really sensible head on your shoulders, and and you really are focused on what you want to do, which is is great to see from from such a young man. You know. Um, and I don't think anything's going to get in your way because you don't seem to to let anything get in your way. <laughs> um, I mean, kind of, you know, do you ever let your hair down and real go wild, and and or, or is it is it super focused for you? Um, I definitely have a balance. Um, my friends and people that know me know I like to go a bit wild sometimes here and there, but uh, kind of like, that's what racing drivers are meant to do, really, aren't they? But uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm 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 really focused um on what I need to do and, and what I want to do and but you I, I always think I need to have a balance as well because I mean you're always I don't know, it's like if I had to sacrifice my whole life and just wasn't even enjoying it, I didn't get to do things my friends were doing and I think I don't even know if I'd enjoy it myself anymore. So I think for me it's really important that I have a balance in my life and I get to I suppose just be a normal normal teenager um when i'm not at the track but de- you can't kind of be fully like that because you have to take sacrifices sometimes with not doing some things um yeah, yeah. but yeah no I, I definitely have a balance with um with racing and i think it's about you know, enjoying enjoying the journey as well as getting to the destination right you know and, and yeah, using exactly. a car, car term it's you know the road is made for the journey it's not made for the destination so um yeah you've, you've got to enjoy that along the way yeah cool so um luca we've done a good 35 minutes man this has been really interesting i've really enjoyed it but um let yeah it's it's flown <laughs> um let's talk about where people can find you where people can follow you and keep up to date with with what what you're up to and what you're on about is is it mainly through instagram or, or do you have your own own website because i saw a website that was there but um i don't know if that's something that's still kind of keeping updated or what's the situation there yeah i'm um well i'm actually my yeah my website is very outdated um i'm doing a course you were now. 14 years um, old in it luke <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm actually doing a website uh, developer course now to try build myself a new website. But um, apart from that, 
for people looking for a website, I'll try to get it up in about three weeks, two weeks. But apart from that, it's Instagram, uh, Luke Allen one, Facebook, Luke Allen racing and, and Twitter, Luke Allen one, two, three, but you can find all my, well now, actually, if you look at it now, you'll probably just find pictures of flowers and stuff on the farm. But when I'm back to racing, it'll be, it'll be interesting stuff and, uh, definitely worth the follow. <laughs> They definitely get to see the real side of you as well, though. Do you know? And I think that's the important thing. Yeah. Like, while, while people are on lockdown, they're getting to see the the realities and normalities of of people from different backgrounds. You know, I I'm a huge soccer fan. I follow a lot of soccer f- kind of people on on Instagram, and no one's kicked a ball for the last two months. So you know, you're <laughs> yeah. getting to see the you know the realities of what they're into and 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 other things, which is which is important as well. Um, but listen, Luca, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, man. I'm glad we eventually got there. We've had 40 minutes of a great conversation. And, um, and yeah, it, you know, we've tried a few times to get it going, and I'm glad we did. Um, when, you're yeah, a Formula One star and I, <laughs> when you're a Formula One star and I come knocking again for round two, um, please, please remember. Forget you. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, really interesting and, and really insightful. And, um, yeah, man, uh, wish you all the best for the future. And we'll definitely do this again a little bit further down the line and, and keep an eye on your journey, bro. Great. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time today, dude. Take care of yourself. This is my dad's podcast. He's an isolated ape. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your support.